Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues using a sub-mod called Bone Cohort. And which we're playing as, well, the Borealis' Cohort sent off from the Legion, which we'll talk about, but we're coming home. Seven months ago, Kaisa summoned the twin centurions Borealis and Australis to his tent at Flagstaff, the Malpaius Legate. Their mentor stood at his side, there. He gave an important order to the only twin centurions of the Legion, Borealis. I need you to take all of Oregon. I'm going to need the distraction that the North has to offer if I'm going to cross the Colorado and take the NCR. I'm going to trust you with a handful of cohorts and five other centurions. You accomplish this mission. Do it and you'll become the next legate. Fail me and you'll become a good distraction. Show these prolificates no mercy. Yes, my Kaiser. Kaiser has given Borealis and Australis a direct order to conquer Oregon and return before January 1st, 2280. If that day passes and Borealis is still not accomplished this, he'll be branded as a traitor and marked for death, causing the cohort to fall into disrepair. Oh boy, the twin brothers. Kaiser gave Centurion Borealis a job. He wasn't about to fail it now. Returning home. A chance of a lifetime, a lucky draw of a straw, a huge coincidence, it couldn't be told yet. But here's Borealis. I don't give a darn about what you think, I will do as Mars wills it, the Northwest will be mine. The Borealis was born in the North, far away from the rise of the Legion, with his twin brother, Australis. In a way, he's un an unremarkable and average Centurion, he has the ability to fight and take over foes. He can lead men and organize war bands like any other Centurion, but his ambition ever since he got the order to take the Northwest has been unmatched. He will stop at nothing before he takes over the Oregon or dies trying. The task ahead, though. 1,000 Legionnaires to conquer whole state. Australis almost called it madness as the two brothers were sitting in their tent. They both looked distressed, having told all their slaves to go outside as they lay out in their resting spaces. Nonetheless, Borealis touched his chest, his fingers almost trembling in his doubt as they felt the cold metal, remembering the hills, mountains, and plains of their old home. A mix and strange feeling. The red vegetation, the smell of the river. Do you remember home? Do you remember our house, our father? The scarred brother spoke aloud, rising from his cot. I do, I do remember all of it, brother. <clears throat> Australis answered, staring up at the man who was his almost identical clone, Borealis' hand holding the necklace that his mother had given him. Holding a tide is the most precious thing in the world and the only reminder that the brothers had other previous life. Then you should know what we were going that we were going to do this. If you say so, brother. And do you remember mother? I miss her, brother. Ooh. 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 Now, now with this uh, sub-mod, there's different things ways we can take um, different paths eventually. I'm not sure there's multiple paths right now at the time of this recording, but I, I'm not really sure which one we should go. There's an extensive narrative elements. Slavery returns. This is a hard mod, apparently, too. So, 170 focuses and whatnot, so... Find love in Oregon. Well, you know what? If you say so, brother. We'll go with that one. Stability's always nice. And we got some military factories. Uh, we got nothing here. Uh, machete... I guess it doesn't give you air attack. One and a half breakthrough, same soft attack. This does give you more piercing. But it does use a scrap metal. We have no scrap metal, so. Ooh, collars. Mm, I need dynamite, though. We need a lot of things, actually. Mm, anti tank. Collars, support. What is this? Tribal scout kits? Huh. Yeah, those are pretty important, too. We do have special forces here, so. But strangers in a strange land. At the Oregon home. At least it was before we left. What is this? Cult of Mars. Legion believes Kaiser to be the son of Mars. A god who brought a cleansing fire upon the earth so his son may conquer it all. They're fiercely devoted to Kaiser. The trip to Oregon. As soon as Kaiser's orders were given, the twin brothers started to prepare the expedition. The Malpais Legate observed them, not speaking a single word in advice, gathering the men and having to accept the five specific centurions that Kaiser had assigned to them. No more, no less, as said by Kaiser himself. The real question was, how are they going to reach Oregon? <clears throat> of course, Australis remembered the trip, so the so-called odyssey that they had made with their father so long ago through the dangerous lands of Nevada and Utah, but that was too long. It took them more than a year, and they were only three people back then. Secrecy was out of the question with the cohort that his brother was preparing at the moment, men and equipment. Nonetheless, his doubts were put at rest as a slave. A tribal from Utah spoke aloud. Why don't you north uh, through the dead horse's lens, up the New Canaan, then northwest through the river? The slave pointed at a map which the centurion was staring, making the green eyes of the centurion light up like a beacon. I'd kiss you, seas, but we got a long trip ahead, sailing the Colorado. Borealis and Australis. 
Um, started the journey to the northwest through the Colorado River, having embarked on most of the canoes and ships they managed to build and scavenge in the last weeks, just for a few miles until they went straight north of the Green River, and finally into the tributaries, finally docking their ships in the land of Unita. Unita. A few travels from the east, a tribe called the Old Bones, which made Australis giggle, even decided to join her men after seeing her massive expedition. Talking about bones and skulls, Borealis and Australis. Uh, found them quite amusing and let them join the expedition. According to their maps and scouts, the people of Unita were simple and disorganized. The expedition made easy work of them and forced the travels to carry their boats and canoes towards New Canaan, on the way towards the land of the, of the Canaanites. They enslaved those who were deemed weak enough and erased all the raiders in their territory. As their lands and homes were finally safe in the most legion way that they could be, and most of the rebellious population enslaved, their newly formed cohort marched on. But what would we do with them when we reached our first milestone? Yet we let them return to their lands after reaching the border. As we move you to the next step, we worked, hard, we worked them hard to death, saving us supplies. Gain extra slaves when the court settles down. Ooh. Manpower I like. I don't want to do any war support, though, so we're going to go with this one. Reaching New Canaan. When the first explorers and scouts came back with the first pieces of info about the New Canaanite settlements on the border, they were quite surprised by the friendliness of them. Both Borealis and Australis were glad of that outcome as they did not want the battle to their way to the Salt Lake and it would be a great way to get no get to know more about the ways of the Canaanites, which Ma Pius Legate spoke so fondly of them in their private conversations and classes. The whole cohort with their slaves walked into the so-called cities of New Jerusalem and New Canaan. Welcome like weary travelers, the legionnaires were mostly distant, yet a few tried to communicate with the locals under the watchful eyes of the centurions as their baggage train moved through the so-called Route 40 and finally the I-80. <clears throat> Nonetheless, a great amount of New Canaanite missionaries forced themselves to come along when a now-crucified legionary revealed our plans of conquering the Oregon and Australis and Australis' insistence, they're welcome to join us. They're quite friendly and helpful in our travels into the Salt Lake, giving us supplies and speaking of the Lord. We accepted every gift that they gave us. Ooh. Memories of the past, but we were we were going to enslave them as soon as we left their lands. <coughs> Ooh, weaponry and flamethrowers. We'll gain extra slaves. Money's important, manpower is important, but I don't want to lose stability. Memories of the past and the shores of the Salt Lake. Borealis and Australis swept into the cold water, letting the salty water touch their feet before they kneeled on the water without their clothes and armors, looking into the sunset so red and beautiful, and a sign in the cult of Mars of coming bloodshed, and under silence the brothers, at the same time submerged their heads into the water, just holding their breasts as his father did the last time they were there, a small memory. Kids promised me, when you become men, go back home. Our home, find your mother. The hoarse voice of their father went through their minds, making both of the twin centurions to stand out. The sunset did not look like Mars anymore, soon enough. The men and the slaves were ready to get into the boats, onto the Salt Lake and toward the north, to the so-called Snake Canal to the north. The Mormons among the group spoke of the lost Christians in the north, embroiled in civil wars and disagreements, and how easy it was to keep going, uh, to keep sailing without bothering them, yet some of the men felt anxious at the lack of battle. We sailed towards the north without trouble. We raided the mouth of the canal. Who do we even have here? Oh, can't be fired. Centurion Corbillus. Look at that. Daily elite support. Interesting. Ooh, plus 5% more attack. That's nice. Infantry attack and defense. Okay. The Snake River. As the boats of the cohort reached the Snake River, after going through the old and, dis and disrepair Snake Canal, they were greeted by several patrols from all three Christian nations to the river. They anointed the uh, Murtaugh reformers and finally the High Chapel, with the last ones being the ones with the biggest presence, at least boat wise. As they had no clue about our intentions, they sent their missionaries to come with us, the Mormons in our group, explaining to them who, were, who we were and where we were going before a theological four-sided debate started in one of the biggest boats in the fleet. Nevertheless, it did not reach levels of high aggression due to our indifference to their matters. The real question was, were we going to raid these Christian river, uh, river Christians or not? They showed kindness and friendship to us, even giving us some men and support to deal with the cannibals in the West. We accepted any sort of help that we could get. We burned every port and home by the river on our way west. A quiet moment. Hey, nobody's listened to us, right, brother? Okay, good. I just want to let you know that even if we fail, I'm not going. I know we're not going to fail. We are so brothers. I won't leave you. I've never left you. Okay, right? You're my centurion, and I know before you tell me I am also centurion. You're my older brother. You're my other half. We will do this. Just focus. I'll do the rest. Okay? We will go home. Do you remember the big red tree? Do not forget your camera. We're going to conquer this whole state. God, Mars, willing. Australis. Interesting. And who do we have? Australis. He's a blue guy. Centurion Saltus. Eradanus, Corbillus, Corbillus, yeah. Isaiah, Defectum, oh boy. Mm. 
Well, I assume we're going to go this way first, probably. Benny, Vidi, The core is preparing and machetes are being sharpened. Firearms are getting cleaned and metal armors are being polished. All the men in the castrum are saying their prayers to Mars and even some whisper of the rosaries that they got from the Christians. But for now, it does not matter. They're going to be dealt with after the conquest is over, the landing. When the cohort finally landed in the lands that Borealis and Australis recognized, so much had changed, but also so little had moved at all. For their eyes used to the deserts and aired lands of the burning Arizona, it was a calming sight. The terrifying crimson red forest with an eerie glow that reminded them of their mother. Not so much for the rest of the legion as they prepared the landing of their canoes and ships, immediately moving into the closest town, the one the locals called Jordan Valley. But before they could continue, they had to think of what they'd do with their ships. The ships could be sold to the town before we return them, getting up some very much uh, required funds for trade or otherwise. We could scrap them. Resources in these foreign lands could be scarce. The people in the town surely would love to buy our ships before we enslave them all. Morialis takes a photo of the moment with his trusty camera. Scrap our ships. We'll return by land or we won't return at all. I want to, before we save them all, um, scrap them. I like this one because we need, uh, we need that scrap metal, so. Hey, look at that. Men of the East. So have a group of different Christian cults that we have met in our travels that followed us. Wanted to spread the message in Oregon as it's a tainted land. Wayward daughter, oh. Boreas had a mixed relationship with nature. He did not share the same fondness for it as Australis did, expecting each tree, bush, and animal, but he was able to discern landmarks from even the slightest of differences from an upturned stone to a tree with a slightly lower branch than its neighbors. He was also able to know these landmarks had been disturbed. This was one such instance. Normally, Boreas would have the full might of a century of the cohort right behind him, but the recent wave of war upon war made it so he had to be less wasteful. <clears throat> the same cannot be said of the inter interloper, who had just disturbed a well-hidden path the cohort had been setting up to, to get the jump of the next enemy. But before Boreas could think about who among his enemies would have this capability, he and the rest of the cohort of decade were greeted with the gruff yet light and soft voice of a woman. Octavo rubra? No, that's red. This is more purple. Mahonia aquafolium? No, it doesn't have the flowers. Where are you, little guy? Holding out his hand, Boreas motioned for cohort to surround the woman. As he encircled her, he noticed her strange garb, plated armor, fixed with strange symbols of circles, swords, and toothed wheels. But it only took one word for the memories to come flashing back to him. If only the Brotherhood could see me now. Brotherhood, he had only ever fought one personally, but it was a rite of passage for many, if not every centurion, to fight and kill a Brotherhood paladin, taking their armor piece for their own centurion armor. Emerging from the bushes, Boreas put his hands up. Woman of the Brotherhood, we mean no harm to your kind for now. Turning to look, the woman gave it a bright smile. I wondered when you'd show yourselves. You and your funny friends have been stalking me all day, it seems. An arched eyebrow, but we only came upon you just now. Huh, so it wasn't you. That would mean, oh no. Erectus. An arrow soared between the two, burying itself inches away from their faces. Mistaken. Miss. Taken identity. The decade was reduced to half its numbers within minutes, with Borealis and the Brotherhood woman barely holding on, from both a surprise attack and discerning whether they should attack each other when the ambush concluded. But neither came, for in the distance, a horn sounded bringing the sounds of fighting and death to a halt. The decade now reduced to just two men, a veteran Narcissus and Deconus Calidus, emerged from the woods. The Brotherhood woman spoke first. You know if you hadn't followed me, you wouldn't have had led the enemy into your little boy uh, scout trail for them to assault you on. You lucky seems to be scouting for us. Boreal snarled. Lucky? You call luring us into your feminine wiles, having my men decimated, and an enemy that knows of a spot we intend to keep secret lucky? Give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you where you stand, wench. The woman's eyes became salsers, his words sank into her mind. Rushing to find a nearby rock, she took out a number of jumbled pieces of metal from under the brush. I call this a good, pretty good reason. It's a set of cheery new T-45 power armor. Work in progress, that is. Haven't found enough wonder glue to glue it back together. The tip of the centurion grew even shorter, drawing his already bloody blade. I see only a pile of scrap metal. If you do not satisfy my request, you will become a pile of scrap yourself. Less scrap, to be accurate. The woman waved her hands once more. Look, I think we got off on the wrong foot. Let's do this again from the top. She put her hand out. Hannah Stahl, Brotherhood Pala Nice, nah, you know, let's just stick with Brotherhood. I don't like talking about my time with the Brotherhood. Boreas began to sh uh, sheath the Gladys back into its sheath. Centurion, you say that the collection of metals out of the famed armor of power and that you intend to resemble it. I believe I can formulate a compromise for mutual issues. Hannah Stahl joins the Borealis cohort. Fix the armor and I won't kill you. You have until the end of the season, Hannah. Become a research advisor. Oh, refined warfare. Interesting. Infantry armor goes up for more hardness, more daily armor XP gain, gun rider opinion, daily ruler support. Because uh, right now we're losing support right now. Quite a bit. The elites and centurions, Australis's cohort. Or Australis's cohort. And travel slaves. Preparing for battle. Out uh, of the situation when the boats was done, the legionaries moved on to the Jordan Valley. The local surprise is such an onslaught, I never expected such a sudden force attacking their little town immediately. Surrendered. Most of the buildings of the town were called Jordan Valley, were nothing but rubble, but yet it wasn't quiet. All the newly made slaves were working on the construction of a camp with the rubble and stones of the old town. Centurion Corobus 
was the one leading the construction. A new fort, or castrum, was being set up in the hill known as Pharmacy Hill, overlooking most of the surrounding areas. Miles of open hills and plains in every direction, the bone dancers were caught off guard, but both, the, both of the twins knew that sooner or later, Cranium was coming after them. They knew until Castrum was aptly named Castrum Cardinalis, by Australis' insistence. Where is home, brother? A few miles to the east, what, don't you remember, brother? What? What do you mean, a few miles to the east? Why have you not landed there, brother? Australis said in sheer surprise, as if not believing that Boreas could ever make a mistake. There's some long seconds of silence, as a group of legionnaires and some of the Mormon missionaries carrying supply crates and other export equipment walk past them. Actually, if we're going to buy the idea of pre-war borders. I suppose home is in the state of Idaho, not Oregon. Sibus, or Sibyl, a scientist of Canaanite ancestry and who joined the expedition when they reached the lands of New Jerusalem, spoke aloud before being silenced by a jab given by Boreas, dropping the man on the floor with his face bleeding. Well, had he sooner or later, Boreas spoke with a growl. Of course, brother. It's not like we could have landed at home. Men of the Pillars. Strange Latin-speaking tribal surrounding rock formations in a specific place that used to be called Rome. What does Rome even mean? Does it even matter to the Legion? Ah. The deadline. Boreas' uh, mission to, is to conquer Oregon and strike south. He has to conquer Oregon and deal with the Centurions before he can finally strike south to deal with the bear. That's his only mission. Personal records of Centurion Boreas. Look at this. Oh, that's a photo. That's awesome. So now we got some political power. So you, Saltus... Uh, who do we have here? River Pirate? Uh, probably not. Flyboy? Probably not right now. Narcissus. Centurion Wannabe. Isaiah versus Wannabe. Oh, the same guy. Centurion Eridanus. Daily Ruler Support, which I do like. Theosius Ignite, Hannah Stahl. But it gives you more XP here. So we have Cohortus Nova. Immediately get more penalties when you get to this one. Immediately even more penalties. Oh, hidden recruitment law. What is that? Never available. What sucks? We are Legion. Ooh. Another kind of slavery. A new standard. Ooh, a daily compliance. I like that. Ten soldiers. Even more compliance. Prolificates? Oh, God. Battle hardened soldiers, not bad. Do this daily political power, but it's not that much. Western survival training, not bad. What do we have here now? Seize Ferris. Construction speed, repair speed, agricultural research speed, resource procurement speed, reluctant scientist, research speed. Eh, that's not bad. What do we have here? Rufino. Stability, experience, social losses. Priestess of Maz. Daily political power, stability, and ruler support. Centurion Songbirds. Amelia Reinhardt. Daily compliance, resistance goes down. Interesting. Major businesses. We don't believe in businesses here, apparently. Um, we do have the state press. We lose political power, better resistance, and compliance growth speed. No other slavery? Dang it. Um, well, we're never kept for the army, so I'm going to go with probably Priestess Aram. Amarum. Mars is the only god on this burned planet. He burned it so the Legion could come and conquer it, showing the remaining people in this world the righteous path to follow. Now listen to me, little ones. Amarum is the head priestess of Mars of the expedition. <clears throat> A woman chosen by her devotedness to the cult of Mars in her sheer fervor when trying to convert and raise the young tribals. One would ask why she has joined. As she has made some mistakes in her past about the representation of Kaizar and Mars' great plan, she was forced to join the expedition. I'm gonna go with her. <coughs> I like it. Words of Christ. Oh, it's complete a victory or dishonor. Uh, I guess that's what's next after this. After Men's a Pillar. Cranium will be forced to declare war on us, as we are the aggressors they are not prepared yet. Take the initiative and don't get bogged down, you can do it, Frata. Radonis. Oh, wait, what? Oh, crap, we have to go to war with... Oh, what is this? The Court of Bones. When he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come. And another, a red horse, went out, and to him who sat on it. It was granted to take peace from Earth, and that men would slay one another, and the great sword was given to him. Revelation 6... Oh, oh my god. Very grumpy, huh? Keeps a halberd. Stahl. Who's on this side? Eridanus. A very old, very wise. Not athletic. Old. Seize Ferus. Goblin energy. Isaiah's the younger. Very dangerous. Corbus Rufus. This is awesome. Cursor Corporosis. Very fat. Very fat. Eats a lot. Rufina. Christian doctor, huh? Good teacher. Amelia Reinhardt. Huh. Beautiful voice. 
Priestess Amarum. Loves children, dislikes sand, true to Maz. That's interesting, and then we have this guy down here too. Sybil was a lone scientist, very forced to work, very worried, wants to go home. River Christians. On a trip along the Snake River and a little visit to New Canaan, we have met several groups of the Mormon and Christian missionaries wanting to convert us into their different gods. Even if they were the same ones according to Amarum, our priestess, but in the wrong way. Although we could never fall under their lives, most of our men have served under the Malpais Legate and Australis almost dangerously almost dangerous curiosity under their book, there's a clear connection between the two groups making a contact and cooperation easier. The Seraphi Crusaders are willing to help us in our conquest of the Bone Dancers, although it could lead to problems in the future. My name is Legion, for we are many. Australis stopping dramatic. Or creates them into a legion. They'll join us as two auxiliary units. Lords, gods, prophets, they are all the same to us. Borealis, can't you be nicer? Ooh. That's probably a mistake. I probably need the manpower for this. Ooh. We do have a uh, scam, which is nice, but that's not going to be enough. That's really cool. Projection of automation causes to envisage a society that works together in unison. The reintroduction of machines and other pre-war tools to damage or drive cause are set forth in the subjects. <clears throat> Barely good expedition, which is very bad. A war band, a group of legionnaires without cause or without supplies in a foreign land. Every man is a warrior and every woman is a menial slave. There is little time nor space for industry. It happens, you know. Pillars of Rome. At the first expedition, I had father inland to secure the surrounding lands after setting, setting the castrum. They discovered something that the father of the twins had spoken about once or twice. The pillars of Rome are a strange sites, a series of stone pillars located near the small town of Rome. Within these lands live the tribe known as the Pillarmen. Defenders of the pillars, they wear their garb of their ancestors, and generally act rather strange, still. They seem content to see us, fellow Latin speakers, and they decided to join a cause against the bone dancers. Borealis once again steers to questioning a lot of things spoken by Khazar. It's another proof of ancient Rome, and the things that Australis spoke about the book he carried around, the one that was gifted by the Malpais Legate. My name is Legion, for we are many. And then small tribe full of coincidences. We don't even have enough divisions for the front line. We need them, but I want to see what it's like without them. Recruit, oh wait, recruit manpower cost. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we can't make anything, huh? Oh, barely equipped expedition. Oh, that, that makes sense then. How many divisions do they have? One to seven. Well, we move fast enough. We should be okay. We do have special forces here, so. Hmm. Not ideal. But if it goes poorly for us, which it probably will, we'll redo it. Maybe. We'll see. I want you to learn. Oh, you have actually more there. Um, savage leader, which is good. Planning speed, max planning, group size, reinforce rate, junk rounds, division attack. I'll see. About division attack. You know, we could use equipment, don't get me wrong. Oh, they go straight up to war with us. Okay, interesting. Enslave everybody, the word of Christ. Horns of Moroni, train geckos. We lose defense. I don't want to lose any defense. We're on the defense already. I may change stuff up here, um, just so that we can make sure we don't die completely. Words of Christ? The Malpais like it always spoke fondly of his lord, of his Canaanite of God. He believed in Mars and the Lord at the same time. Khazar never gave it too much thought. The teachings of the Christian God are very similar to the ones of the Legion. With a few exceptions, of course, but they can be used in our advantage. It's good. Reference banners are good. Chaos in the Nevada territories. Very good. And this drills? No, I think we're okay. Mobilize the people? No, I think we're okay. We have no stability, but that's pretty normal. 
special for technology. Yeah, we literally have no one to spare. Go here, here, here. That'd be nice to encircle them, but still waiting for them to move and whatnot. I mean, they want to kill off all their men. I mean, we don't have a lot ourselves, but still. That's not ideal. Could you go here to here? Could that work? We'll see. Utter failure. Oh. Will abort. If not complete within 136 days. Oh, God. So we have to be extremely aggressive then. Train geckos. The pillar men are near the pillars of Rome and become masters of training geckos as battle warriors. Perhaps we should purchase some of their train geckos? Horns of more now, huh? So much as I do want to do that one. Let's go over here. Ah. Better organization, I like that. Home's law, nice. Peter them out anyways. I want you to go here. You go here. Secret so language is also very good. We do not get encircled. That would be quite bad. Construction repair. I'll start working on this one. Yeah, because we got this, which is fine. More recovery rate, more HP. There you go. Oh boy. Should know it's the capital, though. Didn't need manpower, right? Nice. We're getting there. Let's save everybody. As we are now at war with the Bone Dancers, we are lack sufficient numbers to push. We'll save every single man, woman, or child old enough and force them to fight against the tribes of the West. And slave prisoners. Yeah, that'd be good for manpower. Slave prisoners. We'll make every single surrendered enemy into the slave auxiliaries. They'll fight their kin and friends under the threat of death. There may be a fate worse than that. Good. All right, so now we can actually move around a little bit more. I need you to go here. In, out, and around them. Oh god, they have another division there too. Not ideal. Crap. Well then. Fine, it's fine. Good. The more enemies we can rid ourselves of, the much easier this will all be. Where are you going, son? I told you to help us support the attack. There we go. Okay. Let's go in. Keep them in place. We're actually doing really very, very well so far. 40 versus 680. Not bad. No, no, you go here. No, you, you stupid... You go here. Fight for your life. 
We don't have enough men. We don't have enough guns. Defeat of the cohort means a fate worse than death for us. Charge of prolificates. Attack, attack. Replace with capital lock. Cap locks. Attack, attack. Really lose all the stability we ever had. Nice. Oh, they're pooping out more divisions. Keep them in place. Good. There we go. Go here. Start taking all the tiles. That's literally all you need to do. Let's take all the tiles. We got them! We actually did it right! Without any extra ox uh, divisions. Nice! Yeah, but we actually did that. Successfully. Okay, Malt Station, huh? I don't know where we're going next. I don't know, I'm assuming there, maybe. We did very, very well. Do we get a reward for that? Look at all these photos we've got. I love it. I'll, this this is actually really cool. Um, can't be fire, so no point even looking at that. Resistance target goes down. Ooh, this would be good too. Rufino would be nice. But can we get more stability at all? I don't want to lose weekly war support for that, though. Reluctant scientist, growth, efficiency base. Um, I don't mind more compliance, though. Hmm. I, I don't know that song, Cesare. What is even is a vault dweller doing here? Of course, in Arizona, we were quite the vault tech vaults running around. Amelia was raised, born and escaped from one. Such a shame that due, due to fate, her good looks and lovely voice, she was forced to become a singer and slave of the Legion. Nobody really knows who brought her along, but no one else is complaining about it. You better fight for your life. We can go through all these, but I don't want to lose our arms factors any more war support. That's 25% war support. We have no stability now, so. Um, but we did get the manpower. So the southwest of Oregon lays in ruins, but from the ashes of the Crimson Forest, the true rulers of Oregon will rise to the test. I would quarrel them all for the bone dancers. Add widespread cannibalism. <sighs> okay. C'est la vie, it is what it is. All right, then. The few industrial factories we have in our lands aren't enough for our needs in this battle. We'll work with the slaves and tools that we have until they are broken down. We need equipment now. It's just true, we do need it, but still. Every piece of metal, machete. We don't need no tools. Every piece of scrap or metal that we find needs to be sharpened into weapon, machete, blunt objects, anything we can get our hands on. War training would be good. 45 auto pistol? Well, I don't like that one, but still. Go ahead of time. What do we got here? Saws. Recon. Recon would be probably smart. It would fit us quite well. We've got other things to do first. Nice. The fate of the Bone Dancers. The lands of the Bone Dancers were on flames. Most of the cities were being looted. Most of the chiefs were being crucified. Women being enslaved and men being forced into the cohort. Couldn't even know that they're their closest men. Hit up in the fortress of Crowshaven, but it was pointless. The whole cohort was waiting for the next move. It didn't take long for them to surrender. The armored and covered in bones men came out of the fortress, forced to walk in a line towards the new seat of Borealis, throwing their weapons at the feet of the centurion of the cohort. As the other centurion stood at his side before, and before Isaiah's, killed lift. His heavy bumper sword to cut the head of the closest bone dancer, Borealis, lifted a hand. <clears throat> the bone dancer warriors were kneeling on the ground, and among them was Cranium, defeated and in utter shame, expecting to be executed straight away. Arise, warriors of the bone dancers. I am your kin, forged in the southern heat, and now I am here at last, to lead all of you into greatness into something new under the banner of the bull. Boreas's voice was loud and clear. Some of the defeated troubles even lifted their heads to look at him in utter surprise and awe. <coughs> Most of them were willingly joining the cohort in that moment. The ones that did not were put to the sword in the same situation spread to the rest of the lands of the dancers. True to Maz. Imagine the say we gained 3,000 slaves, two divisions of veteran bone dancers, and two divisions of motorized bone dancers will join us. Oh. Huh. The reconstruction of the Crow's Haven has started. More refugees and traders from around Oregon and beyond come to our lands to see what the cohort is building. A new nation made of the carcass of a defeated one with the brutal ideas of Arizona. <clears throat> These people are the tales of the twin bulls and sought protection from the cannibals in the west, the madness in the south, and the cold of the north, something that was in utter need after the failure of the wardens of the white and rise of the Washington Brotherhood. What was once named as Crow's Haven was erased from its all maps and mines, as a new city, Nova Borea, was being built in its place, named in the centurion's honor and namesake would be the beacon of Maz and Kaza on the northwest. But behind doors, beyond the ears and working hands of the slaves that the cohort of made, a council is going to be held. A council? A count cohort of bones. Crow's Haven. Finally, used to talk about the so-called fortress that the bone dancers had built above the future tech facility that was underneath and in the command center of the facility. The centurions and twins bet. <coughs> Immediately, tensions were high. The defectum, followed by Isaiah, Corablus, and apart Saltus, spoke loud and clear about their distrust of what Boreas was doing. They knew what to do with tribals. They knew what they needed to do to erase their culture and shape them into the golden bull of the legion. 
I am the leader of this expedition. Kaiser gave me this task, and my brother here. You are free to disagree with my methods, but hear me out. This is our moment. You are all here because in the South, in Arizona, and New Mexico, we caused our eyes upon us. Upon us. Even as glorious as it was, it restricted us. It bound us to his whims. I am your primus. Do not forget it. From now on, you will call me Bone Centurion, as I am finally back in my homeland and to the traditions of my real people. I am their war chief, and I will use it at my, my advantage. It took a moment to breathe. <clears throat> we will do as Kaza's wills, and conquer any prolific in our path. From now on, this cohort won't be hailed in my name, but it will answer to something better, something more important. Some of the Centurions, Isaiah and Corbulus, were quite glad of the words of Boreas, but defectum almost seemed to be boiling in anger, yet he did not speak up for now. It would be called the Bone Cohort, and we are Centurions. Australis spoke at last with a huge grin on his lips. And that day, the Bone Cohort was born. We get the Centurion Council. <coughs> New California has war drums of the North. These modifiers will activate when the NCRs are war with the Legion or uh, our cohort. Division Defense Corps Territories, Distance Growth, Max Entrenchment, Division Organization. The NCR does not know about us for now, but each one of our conquests, after, one, after it, makes the bear grow anxious. Some focuses and events will increase the NCR readiness against a northern invasion and don't waste too much time. Keep count of the bull buffs. They only appear when we are at war with NCR. They'll get 5% core defense. Centurion Council. The Centurions, even if they accept the orders of Kaz and have remained under his command, grew ambitious and reckless, and they even informed a Centurion Council to advise the Bone Centurion. Their interests and ideas about the Legion and the sheer personality of them are what keeps the cohort together, and they are a necessary evil. Nonetheless, Borealis can try to administer power and even bribe them into becoming more complacent and loyal, but if that is not feasible, the twins could get rid of them. Yet the main threat of this is a Centurion defectum, as it leads to so-called Council. He cannot be bribed as he is true to Kaz, and that means he will have to die. Borealis will have to maintain a delicate balance between accepting new ideas and people against the Centurion's hardliners and their men. Otherwise, Oregon might be pushed into chaos once again, but if he succeeds, his control of the cohort would be absolute. Australis, in the meanwhile, has prepared a little dossier of the Centurion's for his brother, true to the Bone Centurion. Replace the Bone Centurion lock with Bone Centurion. Use a lot of political power, focus a lot on offense for the AI, offensive war penalty stability modifier, which is good, attacking division speed plus 50%. Aradonis Vicolus. Aradonis our dear old man. A man who was quite capable, uh, uh, quite old actually, when he joined the Legion, and rose the ranks as the Legion was formed. A discipline of the Malpais Slugget. Our tutor and instructor, we've been under its command ever since we became Legionaries. He's sort of a father figure, even if he's quite clear that he's not our father, of course, joined the expedition straight away, without a question, to follow Centurion twins in Oregon. He is loyal to us. Defectum Certus. Defectum Kazar's loyal pet, his name given by your truly. Brought to this world as a Blackfoot, one of the few men that could be called Primes from the Blackfoot tribe when Kaiser uplifted it was simply a child when the Legion was born in the Arizonian des heat, desert and heat. As well, he's only to Kaiser and the Legion, not you or mine, brother. He was sent with the Legion to keep an eye on us to make sure the North Legion ideals were not tainted by the cold North. True to Kaiser. Saltus Ossidantalis. Ossidantalis. Saltus, a strategist as you. Why am I reading this again? I'm repeating myself. Echo, echo. But one in the Red Sun City in the New Mexico is one of the best unknown centurions of the Legion. Men you do their duties rightfully and righteously without the medals and glory that usually more famous ones get. A friend of mine, very funny times, whom I met in training to be a legionary, dealing with the tribes along the Rio Grande. When I went looking for men to come with us, he was one of the first to volunteer, joining the expedition with his huge knowledge of war warfare. Ostros, why, why do you write this? Isaiah's younger. Isaiah's this young centurion, as you named him. <clears throat> he was born in eastern Arizona. Raised in war and fought in the last wars of the Twisted Hares, is one of the youngest centurions in the whole legion. Known among us by his martial prowess. He chose to join the expedition as he heard about it, wanted to make a true name for himself, as Lanius did not choose him on his mission east. This was his only chance. And Corbus Rufus. Corbus, the redhead centurion, as you call him, brother. He was born in the south, arm around the border, as well as once was Mexico. A logistical genius, a man who was once under the control of the whole southern Arizonian logistic analysis work. He has fallen from grace due to his lack of commanding presence. He was branded a coward, almost crucified by the orders of Kaiser, yet he was saved by your insistence. I was need someone who accept adapted changes in a new and hostile lands, and of course, make a new series of logistical networks. I already know this. What do we got now? Oh boy. The Oregon Trails. Oh, this is kind of a generic one we get when we're playing in Oregon. Thriving the wastes. Scrapyards. Oh, come with roads, stability be nice, more logistic skill, it's good. Local communities, skyscrapers of the north. A barely equipped expedition with a cohort without a state. That looks really good. The bone cohort adds savages, not civilized. Infantry equipment, production costs, non core manpower, oh god. Daily compliance gain goes down. Permanent 50% increase in coring costs, oh god. They build an empire, funding the army. Nova Bore becomes an economic node, which would be pretty good. Send supplies to Kamlo. Be warned, we need to improve our communication technology to send volunteers to the Camelot survivalists. Lessons from the Bone Dancers. 
Well, guess it. We're going to the Bone Cohort next. The Bone Cohort is a new name of the Legion expedition in the Northwest. As its lead, the new Bone Centurion leads legionaries into battle in the hills and forests of Orgium. Travels to the West, Christians to the East, and we're stuck in the middle with you. Yay. Canium's Warriors. That's good that they're mobile. I like that a lot, actually. So we have a lot of different different, different Legion templates. So these are Demolitions with Enforcers. Um, these guys are actually better. Armored Dancers. Armored Legionnaires. Uh, I like this name better. Legionaries. There you go. I prefer that one. Road Warriors. I like the mobile mobile ability of them, like I said, but still. If you move around fast enough, it would be very good. This gives more daily or more army XP. Um, so we got to move fast. What else we got here? The Bone Road. Max factories, infrastructure construction speed. The Roads of Oregon. Cla claims in all of Oregon. Interesting. The Hunter Gecko. Picking up arms. Set of pilgrimages. Well, we gotta do this one. To build an empire. With the lands of the Bone Dancers under our control, the cohort split itself into two different sides the Men of Borealis, the Christians, Bone Dancers, and other tribals. Against the four Centurions, Corobus, Isaiah, Saltus, and Defectum, with the support of the hardliner legionaries. Borealis has to find a very dangerous balance between the two sides, otherwise, the rule of the cohort will be in peril, settling the lands. The problem of cannibalism. I do want to get rid of it. Pretty quickly. We are demobilizing, which is not ideal. I do want to increase these guys' size as well, so we're going to actually do this too. And I like these, but they're not... Wait, hold on. Did I get rid of the wrong one? No. Okay. For some reason, I thought I saw that they were militias on them. Oh god, that would have been bad. Do we have anyone else here now, since we have everyone here? No. Okay. Look at that. Savage is not... Yeah. Kind of sucks. So, is there anything else here yet? Nope, everyone's still the same. Alright. Women at home. I like women at home. Replace savages with not civilized with wars, not diplomats. It's better. Daily compliance goes up, too. 5,000 slaves. And so we'll get more organization resistance growth. Tolerate travel customs. Lessons from the bone dancers. We get bicycles. Basic vehicle tech. Manpower. The odious king. This focus will autocomplete once a certain event or actions are completed. It's making a mess out of the countryside. Enslave the king. Ooh. A dark gift. The state of the cohort. Vixelarius. A heavy cohort doctrine. For birth of the triple axes. I like that. But I kind of like this one more. Forge of the Cardinals. Simplify designs. The tip of the spear. Ooh. The unending legion. Nice. Ever growing foundries versus scavenging for armor. Ride armor designs. Future tech ride armor. Finding the armory. Future tech forges. A heavy cohort. Honestly, I think this one looks better. This just looks looks better uh, overall. Cause all I get are blueprints for the most part and equipment. Future tech ride armor though. That's interesting. I do want to see what that's like. Cause you get all blueprints. Simplify designs. Centurions. Train Centurions, more organization, which is good. Wars of Mars, armored chariots, primitive officers, commanders, listen to the Phoenix. Vixelaris is also very good. Legion Wave Tactics, mercenary advisors. Oregon bus, gecko support. Uh, too bad you can't find it. <clears throat> Tribal bus, Californian bus, Origins, Measure Hitcher Schematics. Future Tech. I don't think we have Future Tech here thing. West Tech, Robco, Units, Warhound, Ghouls, Ghouls, Super Mutants, Nikens. Is it over here? Uh, ah, Future Tech Armor. I guess we get that immediately. Which still wouldn't be bad to have. Still good to have. Honestly, with that focus, it makes more sense to do the right one. So I'm going to do the left one first for this campaign. But I do want to go to war as fast as possible. The Bone Road. 
The Centurions <clears throat> have gathered to plan the conquest ahead, of course. They cannot think of controlling and changing the tribal identity of such a vast land filled with people. This is where the Bone Centurion and his brother have hatched a plan. A very a brutally cunning plan, of course, indeed. Slavery Tutorial The Bone Corps is not your regular nation. It's a nation made by a horde of fanatical legionnaires without a home. An army without a state. This means that you have to deal with the several of the systems implemented and unique to the nation, such as slavery, the previously mentioned pounds of power system, and the upkeep of both slaves and guns to keep the territories under control. Slaves are the bread and butter of the cohort. <laughs> Excuse me, I have hiccups as well. As it, the above for the nations make any kind of construction and industry almost impossible, you need to use them correctly as they are a finite resource, for now. Every nation in the Northwest that you conquer will unlock its bone road and thus letting you get some slaves. Slaves can come from those fo focuses and buying them or even at some random events. You can also enslave a specific state by selecting it and checking on the province modifier. Future cores won't be able to be enslaved. But remember, the save upkeep never goes away. Make sure to have some in reserve. The same can be said for guns. In the top bar, the tab of the Northwest Slavery is where you can deal with the different leaders of the Northwest after conquering their peoples. They can join as advisors or give different buffs. But remember, the Centurion Council does not like outsiders. Oh, and remember to use your market system from Old Row Blues. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Happy conquering. <clears throat> Enough talking. Oh. Hmm. The Bone Corps keeps on marching as fueled slaves lead them towards a singular target, the Nova Boreal, the capital of the Bone Corps. Every one of Boreal's great warbands is followed by masses of slaves. As are the ruins and wastelands across the Northwest. But in order to maintain an expanded grade of Corps, we need to stay supply fresh slaves in need. We currently have 7,000. The whole economy of the Bone Corps relies on its use of slaves. Slaves. For any kind of work other than war, if you're not a legionary, you're a slave. If not completed, oh my god. Build an arms factory. Hmm. Slaves are made to work. They'll do as told and die as told. We simply need to give them enough encouragement to finish their business. Force recruitment. The harsh reality of needing new soldiers is that most slaves do not want to be dying for their masters. We'll whip and force them to believe in what we tell them, and those who survive will lead us into glory. Force make guns. We can make some of the oldest and useless slaves that work in arms production. Of course, most of them will die, but the price we're willing to pay. We'll produce the latest designs of melee equipment only. With amounts of increasing perfect tech, if you increase ballistic, research ballistic or energy weapons, you'll have a few extra of them, but not as many as melee. Force slaves make collars. Forcing slaves to make collars is like a paradox. Who came first, the collar or the slave? Let us think Mars were not philosophers. We can buy slaves. The ways are a hard place, you can get lost, your town can be captured by raiders, mutants are worse, but that means in the end there's always people looking for masters. Or we could sell them. Hmm. <laughs> lands of the Bone. Our new core lands are the ones of the Bone Dancers. They will be the only tribe that won't be totally integrated. That will be central to a new identity, but the influence of the Seraph Pilgrims and Odious King controls most of them. We need to deal with those threats quickly before they grow beyond our control. We can choose to kill the Pilgrims to get rid of their influence or let them settle lands. We'll have to make the council less amicable towards the twins. And lead to problems if we ever had East Idaho. But dealing with the odious is the most critical matter at hand. His acolytes are making a mess out of the countryside, and if he escapes, the course newly found power will be severely the question. He has to be dealt with. <clears throat> in the nation screen in the BOP area, new decisions will appear, including among some other decisions to deal with the centurions by killing or bribing them with slaves, political power, experience. Remember that every time one centurion and his bribe are killed, the daily gain of them will increase, so be careful. Oh, I'm true to the Bone Centurion. Slavery tutorial, which I just read. Seraph Pilgrims, oh my god. The odious king is a ghoul that came to the lands of the Bone Dancers quite some time ago. His very unusual abilities have let him get some of the secrets of the future tech facility, facility where no normal human could have gone. He also has some strange abilities. He and his crimson acolytes sing in a way which can influence people. Hmm. Seraph Pilgrims, a group of Heaven's Gates pilgrims known as the Seraph Lords, have made their way to the Bone Dancer lands. They seek to proselytize and convert them to the ways of the Steam. With them, they bring some of the advanced technology used by Heaven's Gate, the AER Steam Cores, Crusader Grade Power Armor, and even some components to hook up our lands with the Steam's power grid itself. Oh god. I apologize for my hiccups. Um. Uh... Hmm. 
We need 105 infantry equipment for all of our state. That seems difficult. Stability and barely equipped expeditions just destroying us right now. So we need more stability. Um, how many guns do we have? Negative. 67 monies. Can we buy anything here? <clears throat> so now we have enough. Effects are not completed. Oh, look at that. We have dockyards now, too. <clears throat> New hole. Longboat. <clears throat> the roads to Oregon. Oregon is the land of the Northwestern Commonwealth of the U.S. of A, a land filled with mountains, hills, and forests very unlike the plains and mesas of the Legion. Making a new system of roads connecting our city-states would be the most important thing we can do. Yeah, this doesn't seem like it's going to be very good for us. So we need money. we got to deal with Core of Bliss first. Give him money, gold, or caps. That's how you get the loyalty of his kind. Uh, of men. Core of Bliss will be useful for us in the future. Every time a centurion is killed or bribed, the daily bounce power up towards him Increases. Watch out. <clears throat> the Bone Road is a plan that Australis and Borealis have made for the conquest of the Northwest. As they have a few men and resources, controlling such a vast and open territory is impossible. The cohort has to stay on this move, so leaving huge garrisons is not possible. The solution chosen is to kill everyone outside of the city-states. Named that way by Australis, which are so-called capitals of the tribes we conquered, and will give the people outside the capitals a chance to submit directly and relocate them inside the cities. The rest of the people will be butchered, massacred, and enslaved if we need them. All the resources will be centralized in the city-states in which our cohort's control will be absolute. Of course, this is a temporal solution. The lack of raidable targets and the destruction of the countryside will make the raider threat inexistent. Our cohort will likely be a scourge going through the land so nothing will oppose us. When the time is right, our people will come out of the city-states ready to settle the fertile and plentiful lands. True to the bone centurion. I apologize for my cups once again, but we're going to end the episode right there. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue struggling with the Bone Cohort. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.